She chose this career, this life, out of a desire to lift up those in need. A daughter of first responders. We lost one of our best in Brianne Leith. She dreamed her whole life to protect and show empathy for all those she served. And she made it her legacy. She showed compassion, humanity, and love. Touching lives across Indiana. A beloved 24-year-old officer and mother taken too soon in the line of duty. We know that we're going to see her again. Her positive spirit and hard work like ripples through the community she served. I hope that her son and her family knows how blessed we truly are to meet her. Truly blessed to meet her. Thank you. For Thank you for being with us tonight as we honor the life of fallen IMPD officer Brianne Leith. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. We have full team coverage for you tonight on the celebration of life and services for her. We'll start with RTV6's Cameron Riddle live at Crown Hill Cemetery. Cameron. Mark and Amanda, good evening. We just finished witnessing a historic day, not only for IMPD, but in this time of a pandemic, how different today looked. The obstacles, the family and the IMPD uh, members had to get over and go through just to pay respects today to Officer Brianne Leaf. Just behind me, you can see some of the vehicles now leaving that ambulance that just went behind me, one of the last to now leave uh, Crown Hill Cemetery, where Officer Brianne Leaf is now resting. Take a look at some of this video that we shot uh, throughout the day uh, as we have uh, taken this day to mark uh, what is a moment for a fallen officer who was now 1042. She was shot and killed last week, last Thursday, and now a week later is now at her final resting place and is now off duty. The pictures you're looking at right now are uh, Officer Leaf's body as it is being taken out of the coach and then into her final resting place there at her side is a small group, notably her family, her only her immediate family, as well as Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett, as well as well as IMPD Chief Randall Taylor as they present the flag there to the family. That's what you see inside that small crowd. What do we see there? About three rows of people who are inside of the cemetery. But outside at this corner where I am, 34th Street and Boulevard Place, hundreds of people stepped outside and lined these streets to pay their respects to a family and to a woman who couldn't have people inside. We spoke to them this afternoon. First of all, to come out here and have the garb on that we have is extraordinary. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's unprecedented. It's never happened before. This is, which makes it even more odder, but uh, it's very important to show support for, you know, the IMPD officers, uh, Leah, who lost her life and so tragically. And so I, I just feel good to be able to come out here and show my support personally and to stand here even in the midst of this pandemic. And as he did, along with other people in the middle of this pandemic, still coming to pay their rest, their respects, that is, to Officer Brianne Leith, who is now at rest after being marked as 1042, now out of service and in her final resting place. Our coverage will continue throughout this evening on all of this as this went from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to downtown Indianapolis and over to the East District. Coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear from more people who stood in line to pay their respects here outside of Crown. Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis. I'm Cameron Riddle, RTV6. And this was the first ever funeral at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And because of COVID-19, everyone had to practice social distancing. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shows us even though people were not physically packed together, the memory of Brianne Leith brought everyone closer together in spirit. It's both emotional and profound seeing Officer Leith's fellow officers lining the track of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, saying their final goodbyes to their beloved friend. One thing's for sure, hearing people speak about Officer Leith today, she died doing what she loved. Passionate, determined, God-fearing, beautiful. I just love you so much, boozy baby. 
and I'm going to make you proud. It was an honoring under unique circumstances. What would normally be held at Banker's Life Fieldhouse for officers killed in the line of duty was moved to the tracks where racing heroes make their mark at the Indy 500, much like Officer Breanne Leith made her mark on this community. Beginning at the start and finish line, dozens of IMPD officers lined the track, saluting Officer Leith one by one as the hearse passed by, each placing a carnation onto a trailer, carrying her picture that would be taken to her final resting place. Where she would have loved and nurtured the light of her life, her beautiful son, so too must our city come together to wrap our arms around him and his family. To Zane, I hope when you get older, you get the opportunity to watch this ceremony for your mommy. She touched the lives of so many people, and I want you to know that she died as a hero. She bragged about you and loved you with all her heart. A send off like no other for an officer as extraordinary as she who fulfilled her promise to protect a now grateful city. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Well, following the service at IMS, the procession made its way to IMPD East District Headquarters for Officer Bree Leith's 1042, or end of watch call. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum was there and continues our coverage. Dozens of police officers and community members lined this street for the procession and they stood in silence for Officer Brian Leith's final call. This is right outside of East District Headquarters. Her patrol car is parked here and surrounded in flowers. Recruits stood near the car and people bowed their heads, grateful for her service and sacrifice. I am PD Patrolman. Brian Lee's Baker 231 was shot and killed in the line of duty for responding to domestic disturbance located at 1803 Enver Square in Indianapolis. Baker 231 selflessly answered the ultimate call at sacrifice serving the city of Indianapolis and its citizens. Baker 231 Officer Brian Lee and her family will always be remembered in our prayers. Baker 231 Patrolman Lee is now 1042 for the last time. May she rest in peace. A call these officers and community members won't soon forget. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And when we first learned it was 24-year-old officer Bree Leith who had been killed at that scene last week, we began trying to learn everything we could about her. And it did not take long to see the kind of person she really was. Her kindness of heart touched lives in a way she didn't even know. People close to her tell us her love for her son and for her city pushed her to be an amazing officer. Today, we caught up with one mourner who had lined up early by the speedway. His niece had worked with Officer Leith and says he had heard nothing but nice things about her. He wanted to share this message today. I think everybody should respect uh, law enforcement. They put their lives on the line every day for us. And I don't think a lot of people appreciate what they go through and what they do. And uh, I would just say, you know, every time you see a law enforcement officer buy them some coffee or just tell them thank you. We found countless people in the community sharing stories about how willing Officer Leith was to give back and make things better. We have posted those on the IndyChannel.com. As Indiana and the nation continue stay-at-home orders over COVID-19, RTV6 is continuing to stay on top of numbers of cases reported. Today, the state health department reported 41 additional deaths, bringing Indiana's total to 477 lives lost due to the coronavirus. There are 611 more reports of Hoosiers testing positive, making that more than 9,500 cases total. More than 51,000 people have been tested in Indiana. The state also shares the ages of those who have died. About 70% of the lives lost so far have been age 70 or older. Men continue to die at a significantly higher rate than women, but the gap is closing a bit in recent days. 39% of victims were female, 59% 
were male. Now for global numbers, well over 2 million positive cases have been reported worldwide, nearly 650,000 of those in the United States. More than 140,000 deaths are now blamed on COVID-19 globally. About 31,000 of those are in the US. But we always wanna leave you with some positive news. Nearly 55,000 Americans have recovered. And now to the stay-at-home order put in place by Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb. Today we learned the state could start to reopen as soon as early May. The governor said the virus numbers for the rest of the week will be crucial in making a decision on when to start getting back to normal. I'm not putting a May 1 date out there or May 2 or May 7 or May 8, but, but, uh, but we are thinking early May. Other states, including Indiana's neighbor Ohio, have said they will start to reopen schools and businesses on May 1st. And it's a dry evening in central Indiana. Let me show you the colors of a winter weather advisory from Monticello to Logansport and Peru North. That's in effect overnight until 2 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. We're dry this evening. Temperatures upper 40s. We'll take it. It's well below average, but uh, 50 in Muncie. That's a bright spot. Temperatures by the weekend will really start to recover. The evening hours are dry, but notice by 10 o'clock, some rain arrives, may begin to mix with snow, especially north of Indy. Watch overnight, the blues will start to appear with snow taking over to the north, mixing with and changing to all rain from Indy to the south. As far as accumulating snow, Monticello, Logansport, and Peru may see three to four inches of snow. Then it uh, quickly cuts off as it comes to the south. More on that and the warmth in my forecast coming up. See you soon, Kevin. Thank you. With stay-at-home orders and social distancing, is it possible to file legal action over the coronavirus? Still ahead here, how personal injury law lawsuits work in the age of COVID-19. And 911 calls are surging as cities across the nation continue to deal with the pandemic. How our state is prepared for an influx of emergency calls. And then at a time when people need more help than ever feeding families, this food truck is going rural. That's all next when RTV 6 News at 5 continues. And save up to 20% on auto and home. When it comes to COVID-19, you may not see as many personal injury lawsuits and wrongful death suits as you might expect. But if you get sick with the coronavirus, you'd have to prove where you got it to have a successful claim, which can be extremely difficult. As a plaintiff, you have the burden of proof. So if you wanted to sue a store or a business, you'd have to prove that's where you got COVID-19. Attorney Matthew Bigler says if you get sick at work because they're not taking proper precautions, you can't file a lawsuit either. With the way the work comp system is set up, even if your employer is very, very grossly negligent um, and you get sick on the job in the course and scope of the business, um, they have the exclusive remedy of, or there is the exclusive remedy of work comp protection. And there is no personal, you know, negligence lawsuit that can be made. Bigler said. Uh, unless the laws get changed at some point. And Bigler says the lawsuits more likely to be successful are for places like nursing homes where there's no question how the resident got the virus. However, you would still likely have to prove that the company knew about infected employees or residents and did not take proper precautions. As Indiana prepares for a surge in coronavirus cases, we're learning from challenges in other cities and states that they've struggled with across the country. Hotspots like New York City are experiencing close to a 100% increase in 911 call volume during these surge periods. It's why the Indiana statewide 911 board has been working to ensure they are ready for an influx of calls. Our TV6's Alyssa Donovan has the details tonight. Recently, 911 call volumes have gone down because of Governor Holcomb's stay at home order. However, state leaders know that those numbers could increase at any time due to COVID-19 cases, which is why they're doing everything they can to prepare for that possibility. In Hamilton County, 911 dispatchers have been split up between two buildings. We have crews that only work at this building, and then we have crews that are only working out of the backup center. So if someone does get sick, it won't take out the entire county. However, if that does happen, the statewide 911 board has put a plan in place. Should numbers start dropping, 
uh, as far as employees go, and then we need help picking up phone calls. We've made arrangements uh, with other counties for them to be able to pick up our, our uh, 911 calls. There is no guarantee we'll see an increase in calls, but if we do, these centers are ready. We don't want to experience what other cities have experienced, which is a backup. Dispatchers already have a high stress job and they've had to adjust very quickly to necessary changes. We uh, added to our protocols to ask additional questions. Uh, if somebody had been out of, the, you know, out of the country, if they were experiencing any of these symptoms, so we could uh, inform the responders prior to them arriving. They also have to be aware of bed counts in hospitals. That way, if a facility is at capacity, they can inform first responders to take a patient elsewhere. All of these actions are meant to better the response to you or your family members if emergency assistance is needed. We want to make sure that every Hoosier that needs help gets it uh, absolutely as soon as possible. Uh, in the best way possible. So we're doing everything we can behind the scenes. We really hope we're over prepared. There are a lot of services associated with 911 here in Indiana. One of those is text to 911. If you are experiencing some of those COVID-19 symptoms like shortness of breath and are unable to make a phone call, you can text 911 to get the service you need. I'm Melissa Donovan, RTV6. Well, we're past the halfway mark in the month of April, and here we are talking about snow. I want to show you from Lafayette, Kokomo, Peru, north. That's where the greatest chance of accumulating snow, and in some cases, several inches of snow likely for the metro area, areas south. I think it will be all in the form of rain. There's your snow over three inches. Logansport, Monticello, Fowler, Peru, isolated higher amounts. But as you come just a little to the south, there'll be a little fluctuation here, but a couple of inches in Lafayette, Tipton, Muncie, you too could see some changes there with a little movement to the south. Temperatures work in our favor. I think this will be slushy and melting throughout the day as it's falling, 32 in Peru. But other than that, Lafayette to Muncie above the freezing mark and Indy will be at 38, a raw day tomorrow. Tonight, there Here's your snow and rain. The blue represents the snow. 7 a.m. That will be from just north of Indy all the way up to Peru. Heavy at times. And even though road temperatures will be above freezing, I do think you'll see accumulation on the roads. It'll just be very slushy. Then periods of rain through the day. Windy once again. Winds will gust to 30 miles per hour as temperatures struggle. They'll stay in the 30s from Peru north. 40s in Indianapolis, lower 50s in Bloomington. Where are we headed for the weekend? We break out of this a bit. Sunshine, 55 on Saturday, Sunday 57, the chance of rain 40%. I don't think it'll be heavy rain. It looks like it would be second half of the day. Our warm up gains momentum. Temperatures next week, 66 on Tuesday. That could be the best day of the week. As we get to Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures still in the low to mid 60s, but we've got rain chances returning with the warmth. Whereas we've been in the 20s the last few mornings, these overnight lows will be closer to 50 in the middle of next week. We'll restore order to our April weather. It'll just take a while. Back after this. Hiring Hoosiers only on RTV6. With school buildings closed for the year across our state and unemployment skyrocketing due to the pandemic, we know many families may be struggling to make sure their kids are fed. And we see the efforts here in the city to feed Indianapolis children, but that need is still great in rural communities. Sometimes in areas that are more spread out, it can be difficult to get the food to those kids in need. Richland Bean Blossom Community School Corporation serves the northwest portion of Monroe County. We talked to the Director of Nutrition Services and Healthy Schools, Vicki Coffey. She tells us the need is growing for meals in their more rural community, but if parents are working during the day or the people at home don't have their own transportation, it can be difficult to make it to their weekly meal pickups on Mondays at the junior high school from 11 to 1. And that's why the district is literally bringing the food to some of the neighborhoods most in need right now using their healthy food truck. Vicki says while the past few weeks have been outside of their normal routine, she's encouraged by what she sees at these pickups. 
This has been probably one of the most um, unorganized things that I have, you know, put together. And all of us directors in the in the nation, um, you know, we're used to knowing our numbers every day, planning our menus. You know, I have to tell you, I've been doing this all my life, and this has been the most rewarding three weeks of my entire career. When we last talked to Vicki, the district served close to 500 students that Monday, which amounted to almost 5,000 meals for the week. To minimize the risk of exposure to COVID-19, the district has revised their feeding schedule in recent weeks. And we have the locations and times detailed for you on this story on the website, uh, theindychannel.com. RTV6 is proud to be working together with the United Way of Central Indiana during this crisis. We're teaming up for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The initiative supports organizations that serve people and families affected by the pandemic. You can donate to the fund and it's easy. You just text HELP2020 to 91999. This is the news on RTV6.